I'm so excited uh, to be here with you today and to be able to just share with you um, what the Lord's really been putting on my heart lately. Um, I hope you can find a couple of things in here that can help you um, in your daily walk. And uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you the story, um, short story of Martha. Um, this woman is somebody who just Jesus just really put on my heart and I just started kind of walking into um, her and what she does. And so I'm going to start um, and we're going to be in Luke 10 verse 38 to 42. And this is Mary and Martha, her sister Martha, Mary, the same Mary who was at the feet of Jesus and wiping her tears, um, crying and, and using her tears and, uh, and her hair to wipe Jesus' feet. The same Martha who is also brother uh, to Lazarus, whom Jesus rose from the dead. Um, but what we know about Martha is that Jesus loved Martha um, and Mary and Lazarus. Um, the Bible tells us that he was their friend. Um, and this is an occasion where Jesus was walking through with he and his disciples, um, going from town to town, uh, doing their business. Jesus had been really busy at this time. And so he stopped um, to rest at the home of Martha and Mary and Lazarus. So we'll start in verse 38, and it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And that's from Luke 10, 38 to 42 in an RV version here. Um, so who is Martha again? Martha, uh, we know, was known to Jesus. Um, the Bible tells us that. Now, I think that Martha has, just to, even in this short um, time that we're getting to know her here, I think she's got some serious coaching qualities um, probably sitting on her resume, right? We can tell that she um, she probably has a servant's heart. Um, when I'm looking at her, um, she's very orderly. She wants things in order. She wants them to be done, and she wants people to help. She expects that um, everybody's going to be doing what they need to do um, in order to serve Jesus here. Um, and, and she, um, you know, with a brother and sister, you can imagine if you have siblings. I've got three sisters. So you can imagine the feelings and some of the things that go on. If you've got kids, um, you can imagine, you know, the make for help um, and what that means. And, uh, you know, trying to call somebody out. So um, she's just, she has these uh, boss lady type qualities about her. And so I certainly can appreciate uh, reading as I'm reading uh, about Martha, I can appreciate some of those qualities in her. Um, but some of the things I felt like, we're not gonna talk about three points here. Um, and one speaks to distractions. Um, the second point we're gonna look at is seeking acknowledgement. And the third thing is just more Jesus. And those are the three things in this short amount of time that uh, I'm going to try to highlight for you. So um, let's start with distractions. So what do we know about distractions? Um, we look at what uh, Webster's and what the definition from Webster's is to draw away or to divert as the mind or attention. Um, so the Latin and the Greek um, the root is all kind of the same, right? It's to pull apart and to draw in different directions. 
And so um, the word in the in the word it specifically speaks um, to the word distractions. Jesus tells her in verse forty, um, or he says in verse forty, but Martha was distracted. Um, and when I think about distractions, I know. Um, here I am sitting on my phone and, and looking at, at some notes. It's such a handy dandy little thing, but um, I know that our phone and can be so distracting. Um, there's social media these days, there's news, there's the TV, and there's so many other things that um, we can be distracted by. And I know that I'm distracted by on a daily basis and in, in trying to uh, navigate from day to day in and, and this world that we're living in right now. There's so many things um, as coaches, um, you know, not only that, but, you know, some of the things that are happening in and around your program with your athletes and uh, some of those things, while they can be distractions to what's important on a daily basis. Um, and not to say that they're not important, but there is a, a, a priority of ways, right? So um, we talk about uh, distractions. And what we know is that the enemy is real um, and that he will try to distract us from what we know uh, to be important as believers. And um, Ephesians 6, 11 to me couldn't be more important um, for us. And the scripture gives us this, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And we don't want to be distracted. When Jesus is standing right in front of us, um, we want to be able to make sure that we are present um, and, and I think that's a big word. My daughter, she's four, and um, she learned a new word. And ironically, it was distractions, like with an S-H. And she says, when I get home from work and I'm trying to decompress, but I'm still trying to spend time with her, and I have my phone next to me, and the TV is on, and things are happening, and she wants my full attention. But before I know it, she's tugging at me and she says, mommy, you're, you're being distracted. <laughs> and she couldn't be any more right about what distractions are um, and what we really need to be focused on. And so um, we want to just make sure that, you know, we're being present, but also acknowledging, um, you know, the enemy will do those things and and he will prey on things in our life that um, can be a distraction and continue to put them in front of us so that's the first point um, that I wanted to make the second point is you know Martha was looking for acknowledgement she wanted someone to just acknowledge the hard work that she was doing all the preparations she had to get ready the food she was preparing and Clean, getting everything in order. You know, um, when people are coming over, you want your house to look the best it can look, right? Um, so she was just seeking some sort of acknowledgement. She's watching her sister sit there and do nothing. Um, but isn't that so, um, you know, I can remember a time when, it, when I was younger in my coaching career where all I really wanted was to have some sort of acknowledgement to the work that I was doing. And um, I just remember it one day, just, you know, kind of being checked a little bit. Um, and it really wasn't the acknowledgement um, that I needed to fulfill me. At one point, I finally got acknowledgement um, for my hard work. And while it did feel good, it wasn't what I needed still. Um, but what I feel like in my heart, what I was really needing, what I know now to be true, um, was more of an answer to prayer. And I just needed more acknowledgement um, from, from God, right? I needed that acknowledgement from Jesus that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And that ultimately I feel like is what I really needed at that time, not the work I was doing or who I was working, 
um, with and, and, and the athletes I was working with, but it was more about just acknowledging that I was in the right place at the right time and doing um, what God had called me to do. Um, and so, you know, one of the scriptures that we can look at here uh, to reassure us is Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace that ye have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It is not by works, the Bible tells us, but by our faith and by the grace of God. And finally, I want to, uh, one more verse here in Isaiah. Isaiah also tells us, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. And that's Isaiah 43.1. Um, how much more acknowledgement do we need than acknowledgement um, from God the Father telling us that you are mine? Um, the last thing that Jesus reminded Martha about was that she just literally needed more Jesus. Um, as a servant, and you think about servant leadership and what that means and what that looks like, um, we just have to remember what is important in order to start that journey, in order to continue on that journey and be successful in that journey to help um, grow the lives of those athletes that we're working with. Um, and that's Jesus. We need to uh, make it a priority we need him to be present in order for ourselves to be present in the daily lives of others. And so what the scripture tells us, Psalms 46, 10, is it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Matthew 6, uh, 25 tells us, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, whatever or what you will wear, is life not more than food and the body more than clothes? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. And he also tells Martha, you're worried about way too many things, right? You're worried, you're distracted, and you're worried. And God says, <laughs> Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you, right? One of the coolest things when you watch your players and you hear them kind of um, give each other encouragement or trying to pick somebody up is, hey, I got you. We got this, right? And God is telling us, he has got us. He tells us. Uh, the word speaks so clearly to it. Um, and so I just think it's so awesome, again, in these four short verses um, in Martha's life, what she can bring to light to us. Um, ultimately, Jesus tells her in Luke 10, verse 42 of this short story, he says, but few things are needed, and indeed only one. And so I just ask um, that you would remember what is important today. Um, and to be present and to just let your burdens fall on Jesus, let him carry them, um, remove the distractions and uh, really just take a little bit more time. I know I need to um, way more often than I do um, take some time to be with Jesus. So I'll just pray for us really quick. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, that um, your word can bring life into us, Jesus, that we can truly put our burdens on you, Lord, and allow you um, to take control, Lord, allow you to help us, Lord, to, 
serve better, Lord, to lead better, um, and to keep our eyes focused on you the whole time, Lord, so that you, in the end, can get all the glory, Father God. We thank you for this time, and we praise this in Jesus' name. Amen.